Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are taking a wonderful trip down the annals of Illyria to show you the nine brand new Illyrian factions. In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing each of the factions in turn from north to south, giving you a tiny little bit of the history and where their starting position is and what they have around them, of course, and any unique stuff about them that we might see as well. But if you do want an in-depth overview and historical view of all of these faction guys, we're going to be doing an interview video next weekend, but you can go to the developer diaries in the mod discord down below and you can find it there, a really nice overview of all of these glorious factions. So let's now start with the glorious history, guys. These guys are in the north of Illyria, the far north, and they were an Illyro-Venetic people. History and tribes like the Rundictes have occupied the Histrian Peninsula since at least the 11th century BC. They were seen by the Romans as kind of a poor people and were known for raiding down south into Rome. They like to build hill forts by the sea, securing access to the inland as well as overlooking any vessels coming via the sea. Now in terms of the mod, they start up here in the far north, bordering the Liberni here uh, with three settlements right on the coast. We have Parentium, we have Targeste, and we have Nersactium. Now, of course, in the north, they have many rebel settlements, but when the italics are done, guys, I've got a sneaking suspicion that this may not be the case and that these guys are going to be fully done with the italics. Their native culture is Venetic, the only people to have this religion in the game, I believe, guys, until more factions may be added. So, interesting one to play with if you want to expand. And finally, in terms of units, guys, they have the standard Northern Illyrian roster with the History Swordsman as the AOR and unique unit for the history. So let's move further south to the Liberni guys, which I actually love their faction icon. I think it's really, really cool. These guys were known pirates who were famous as sailors and raiders. They seem to have a golden age around the 8th century BC, guys, where according to sources, they held a thassalocracy over much of the Adriatic. Although, of course, we've got to take that with a little pinch of salt due to the sources as well, guys. In history, they expanded into many areas, including Apulia. And one really interesting fact about these guys is that some of the sources mention that this society was run by women, which at least presents the argument that women had a much higher standing and authority in this society than many of the other neighboring uh, cultures and societies like the Italics and the Greeks. Rather a shame then that Rome Total War basically pretends that women don't exist. But as you can see, these guys border many different factions all the way down to the Del Mate over here. They border the Iapodes and are at war with them at the start of the game. And they also border our aforementioned history to the north. They've got a lot of settlements, guys. Seven in total. So these guys should be a real powerhouse of northern Illyria. These guys have two unique units, guys. The Liburnian Pirates, which are awesome because they wield a hammer. That's the only reason why <laughs> they are awesome. Move aside, Thynoi Clubman. We've got a new pugilist in town, um, which is really cool indeed. And there's also the Liburnian Thurio Foroi, which are sort of a Greek slash Illyrian, well, an Illyrian style unit that fights in the Greek style, if that makes sense. So I really think these guys are going to be rather a powerhouse of Northern Illyria. So now let's move on to the Iapodes guys here to the east of the Liburni. And before we go any further, guys, I just wanted to say a couple of things. If you are enjoying these RAS weekends, please, a like and a subscribe would be massively appreciated. And share this video with any other 
ancient history stands out there as well. And secondly, I wanted to say that this is just so awesome to see representing these culture groups that have been neglected, especially by Rome Total War Vanilla, which we all know is not very historically accurate, let's be honest, um, but uh, neglected by other mods as well. There's only a couple of versions of Rome Total Realism that even, I think, had an Illyrian faction, so it's so awesome to see a really underappreciated and unknown culture group added into the game. Really cool. And one thing I forgot to mention, guys, was that the Liburni have their own culture, the Liburnian culture. So here we have the Iapodes, guys. They themselves are Delmato Pannonian, and that is because they have been classified as Illyrians by the Romans themselves, although they were probably most likely uh, of the Indo-European group. They traded with the Greeks since about the 6th and 5th century BC, and we know that they were in contact with the Romans from the 2nd century BC, because the sources state that they complained to the Roman Senate about Gaius Cassius Longinus, who plundered his way through their territory on his way back from wars in Macedon. However, they were not an easy people to quell, and there were several failed campaigns against them, with them finally being subjugated in 35 or 34 BC by Augustus. Many of their towns later became very, very rich due to trade in the Roman Empire. And Metellum, the capital of the Iapodes here, became a Roman municipium. As you can see, they border many different factions. The cultural generic Illyrians, the Liburni, which they start at war with, their only diplomatic relation at the start of the game. They also border the Delmete over here, and they also are very close to the history, not quite bordering them with some more rebel territories up in the north that are actually quite rich with amber guys so quite nice territories to take if you want a little bit of trade however they do only start with one port so sea trade is going to be something that's a little harder to come by and they only have these four settlements although they are relatively relatively consolidated and easy to get around as well in terms of their unique units guys they actually have a few little unique units which is really cool the iapodian swordsman over here which are a sword wielding unit of course they also have access to the iapodian elite spearman here which is a really cool unit as well and finally they also get access to the pannonian warband due to those cultural ties to pannonia next we move on to a more isolated tribe straight east of the iapodes we have the day city eights the day city eights due to their isolated position away from the coast probably meant that they came into contact with the romans rather later than some of the other illyrian Try. It is likely that the first time they ever fought the Romans was in 35 BC against Augustus, and Tiberius fought additional wars in Dalmatia and Pannonia from 14 to 8 BC. However, they are most notorious through their leader, Bato, of the Great Illyrian Revolt from 6 to 9 AD. D, and the rebellion apparently numbered up to 800,000 people with a fighting force of 200,000 infantry, as well as experienced Latin versed commanders and disciplined troops. I think we can take it for granted that it's likely a bit of an over exaggeration, as with all of these ancient sources, but the Roman response does point to a very, very significant response because they responded with 10 legions, guys, more than 70 cohorts, guys. So they definitely did lead a very large revolt against the Romans. The day Setiates were the first to revolt against the Romans and one of the last to surrender, so they were respected as pretty hard fuckers. In terms of your position though guys, you are in a significantly worse position than most of the other Illyrian factions, isolated here in the central Balkans, without much 
routes for expansion. You have the score Disky off to the east, the Celtic people that would be very difficult to fight, the standard Illyrian faction in the north, some rebels, and also the RDAI and the Del Mate over here down to the southwest. They only have two starting cities, guys, and of course, these cities are not going to be trading a huge deal with other cities without that sea trade. These guys are also Del Mato Pannonian, which is really cool to see. In terms of unique units, guys, they also have access to the Pannonian Warband, and they also get their own Die City 8 Cavalry. Next up, we have the Del Mate guys, which are the last of the Northern Illyrians that we're going to cover, and we'll be moving on to the Southern Illyrians next. Their capital, Delmion, which is where their name comes from, is situated behind the Adrian Mountain. These guys seem to yo-yo between being subjugated, rebelling, and becoming independent. They're then subjugated again. Over time, they were subjugated by the RDAI, the Labeateans, and of course the Romans as well, and would continually revolt against these peoples that were subjugating them to become independent, only then to be subjugated again by someone else. One cool little bit of information about these guys is that several dozen pre-Roman hill forts have been found in southern Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina that seem to indicate that these guys had a network of defensive forts against the Liburnians to protect them from their raids and of course protect them from their subjugation. Again, these guys are Del Mato Pannonian because they are quite hard to categorize in terms of of their culture with influences from both the Illyrians and Pannonians as well. In terms of your starting position though guys, you start with four relatively closely packed cities here on the Illyrian coast, but you are sandwiched between several powers in the region, the Liburnians to the northwest, the Dicetiates, the Dicetiates over here in the east, as well as the RDAI to the south, and of course one of the major little players in this region, the Greek settlements of Issa straight below them as well. Now, although they don't start at war with anyone, I think these guys in this region are either in your games going to rise and become a very powerful little faction because, of course, they have lots of rich territory nearby with the Issa, with the Laburni, all coastal with trade. So they can either, in my opinion, are going to rise and become really strong and rich or they're just going to get gobbled up by the larger, more powerful factions nearby. In terms of their unique units, guys, they get a couple of foot units, the Dalmatian Footmen over here, which are a pretty cool looking unit. I do like their shields, very nice indeed. And they've also got the Dalmatian Thurio Foroi as well, so another unit that fights in the Greek style, but as an Illyrian unit. Very cool indeed. Next, guys, let's move on to the Southern Illyrians. So here we start with the RDAI. Now, they already did exist in the, uh, in the game before, but they have been strengthened, revised, and changed, of course, along with this update. Several new settlements have been added in their hinterlands to represent their settlements along the Naro River. And they've also been given the settlement of Nestos as well to represent their expansion into the coast opposite the Issian Islands over here. When Celts invaded Illyria in the 4th century BC, this led to the downfall of a powerful tribe called the Autoriati. Yes, I got that one right. <laughs> this in turn led to the rise of the RDAI themselves. Under this guy's son, King Pluratos, he was called Agron, the son of Pluratos, he expanded the RDAI quite far and wide to encapsulate even the old Illyrian kingdom. They traveled far and wide, guys, even helping out the Akarnanians against the Aetolians in 232 BC. It was only intervention against Queen Tuta, who was the wife and successor of Agron, who <laughs> unfortunately had died 
at a party to celebrate his victory. So, um, I guess, uh, <laughs> I guess alcohol is dangerous, guys. <laughs> But the Roman intervention against Queen Tuta led to a halt to RDA Iron expansion. The ceasefire forbade them from sending more than two military vessels south of Lissos, and this effectively crippled them from conducting raids down in the south and in the Peloponnese, so they were crippled from there on. So these guys were a very, very influential Illyrian kingdom in this period. In terms of your starting position though, they start with five settlements that are actually split in two by this rebel territory here and the standard Illyrians and this rebel here as well. So you've got these northern three that are grouped together and these southern two. You actually start with three allies, the Lebeateans over here, the Illyrian kingdom and the standard cultural generic Illyrians as well. So you kind of have to go north for expansion unless you want to, of course, betray your allies up to the Dicetiates, the Del Mate, or Issa, of course, as well. In terms of your culture, you are Illyrian as culture, standard Illyrian, which is pretty cool. And as one of the main Illyrian factions, you get a rather nice Southern Illyrian roster with quite a few different units. You get the Illyrian Noble Spearman, the Illyrian Epilectoi as well, a really, really cool unit, as well as some strong Southern Illyrian Noble Cavalry. Let's now move on to Labeate. These guys originated from the smaller Illyrian tribes that occupied the territory around Lake Labeatis, which is modern-day Lake Skodra. They gained notoriety under Skirdilidas, who was the Illyrian commander of Tutor and Demetrios. He was an ally to Philip V of Macedon, but of course betrayed him when Philip V would not give him the rightful share of booty after a mutual campaign. And when the Antigonids showed up on the shores of Illyria, they sought the support of Rome. This pro-Roman policy was common for these guys throughout the period and led to them expanding down to Lissos and north up the coast as well. When Genthios, the last Illyrian king, decided to build a large army of 15,000 men and 200 and 70 ships at Lissos and attack many of the smaller Illyrian factions that were Rome's allies in the area. He surrendered after just about 20 or 30 days. Not a Chad move if you ask me. And of course he was imprisoned and his land partitioned as well and it really did mark the end of uh, independent Illyrian rulership of the region there with the Romans stepping in to bring Roman ideals and <laughs> freedom to, uh, to these people. In terms of your religion, you are also standard Illyrian as well, which is cool. And you start here with just two little settlements, one of which is coastal though, as well. You are allied to the Illyrian Kingdom and the RDAI that border you on either side, with a few rebel territories nearby to conquer two, and the Dardanians off into the east. So not a huge amount of room for expansion unless you're going for these rebel settlements instead. Or of course, betraying your allies in standard ancient historical fashion. In terms of unique units, guys, you get the Southern Illyrian roster and a couple of unique units, the Labeatean Thurioforoi, and also another Labeatean Light Infantry, which is, of course, like an Akontistai sort of unit. Let's now move on to the inland territories of Dardania. These guys aim to survive in a lot of cases by keeping a low profile. Hill forts and terraces have been found in these lands that go back to at least the 7th century BC. And in 354 BC, Philip II of Macedon did subjugate the region after his conquest of Paeonia. However, they remained pretty independent because, of course, the Macedonians didn't really want to garrison so far north. During Alexander's invasion of the east and his succession, 
The Dardanians kept a low profile unlike many of the other wandering Thracian and Celtic tribes. Large Celtic invasion armies marched through these lands and into Thrace as well during the time trying to raid the rich Macedonian cities. However, the Dardanians sided with the Macedonians and Ptolemy Karaunos as well during the large civil war and would take out some of the straggling forces that had been beaten off in Greece. However, under King Longaros, this friendship with the Greeks would not last and he invaded Paeonia, taking Bylazora in 230 BC. The Dardanians continued to raid into Greece. In one raid in the 210s BC, they even managed to make more than 20,000 Macedonians slaves and take them back to Dardania, where their economy was heavily based on slave labor and slavery. Their opposition to the Macedonians led to an alliance with the Romans during the Second Macedonian War, but this alliance would lead to their downfall, with Philip V inviting the Germano-Celtic Bastani, who had recently crossed the Danube, to attack and conquer Dardania. While they met initial success, they were evicted later, but this would lead to the slow decline of the Dardanian kingdom before they were finally subjugated by the Romans in 28 BC. As the Dardanians, guys, you actually do start with rather a lot of opportunities, in my opinion. You've got the Celtic Scordisci to the north, which I wouldn't recommend going for if you are playing as Dardania, but you have the weak Thracian smaller factions down to the south, of course, then bordering into the Antigonids. So lots of opportunity there for that. And if you want to, you have the opportunity to come onto the coast and take out the Illyrian Kingdom, Labeatea, and maybe the RDAI as well. I think, honestly, this is a really cool faction and has a lot of opportunity for expansion in pretty much all directions if you want to. You start with five settlements as well, which is really, really cool. And you're going to be producing a bit of money as soon as you get onto the coast. In terms of your culture, you have your unique culture of Dardanian, which is really cool to see. For your unique units, guys, you actually get a really, really interesting couple of unique units, which are the Dardanian Noble Spim. And look at those boys. They are really cool indeed. And you also get a Phalanx unit as the Illyrians which is really, really interesting and probably going to make you pretty OP when you go and fight the rest of the Illyrians. And also, it will at least mean that you can maybe match even the Macedonians with your battle lines. Um, probably not quite match them in terms of the stats and the power of your Phalangites, but you can at least hold a line with Phalangites against their Phalangites while you do all your cheeky little maneuvers like hammer and anvil. Now let's move on to the Illyrian kingdom, guys. This kingdom was born out of the rulership of King Glaucias, who was a contemporary of Alexander the Great. And though Philip II had conquered Illyria during his reign, Glaucias and Cletos revolted upon Philip's death in 335 BC. Alexander did besiege Cletos at Pelion and defeated him and the reinforcing Glaucias, but Glaucias managed to still secure his part of the region. He ruled for a significant amount of time, guys, over 30 years, which at this time period in these transient kingdoms and backstabbing uh, sort of uh, factions, that is very, very rare to see. He protected young Pyrrhus of Epirus in 317 BC from Cassander and helped the cities of Apollonia and Epidamnos to defend themselves against the same. However, Pyrrhus would go on to annex Apollonia as well, leading to the loss of the southern parts of the kingdom. However, the Epirotes were not to hold on to it for too long and they lost the territory after the death of Pyrrhus. Glaucias' successor, Monunios, was the first Illyrian king to mint his own coins, which is really cool, um, which he did in Epidamnos himself. 
This kingdom was heavily involved in the successions of Epirus and Macedon as well, and remained a long-time rival for Epirus. Eventually, their downfall came after the Third Illyrian War between the Romans and the Labataeans, and after Roman subjugation of the region, they lost all of their political power for this region. But a really cool faction with a really cool history and, of course, pretty strong as well. You start allied with the RDAI and the Labataeans to the north, but you also start at war with the Greek city-states and Epirus too. So your expansion routes are pretty much south down the coast into Epirus. However, don't be surprised if the Antigonids attack you, because of course, although the Antigonids are at war with Epirus, you do border them as well. These guys start with primary Illyrian culture as their religion, and they start with one region on the coast, Epidamnos, over here. So that's going to help you build up your uh, build up your money and your trade in the region, especially if you can conquer a few more coastal cities down in the south. In terms of unique units, they don't have too many, but they have a pretty decent roster with the southern Illyrian roster. And finally, guys, I just wanted to mention the cultural generics, the Illyrians. They are there to represent some of the tribes and peoples that didn't make it into the final version as a faction. Of course, very spread out all over the place, but they are there like the GCS and like the generic Anatolians and Thracians. They're a generic faction there to represent them and basically, you know, provide these regions with a bit more flavor and stop them just being rebel territories where the rebels don't really build up settlements. These guys are going to build up their settlements, make them better to take and of course build up armies too. Although of course um, the cultural generics are less aggressive than the rest of the factions, shall we say. But it's just going to allow a little bit of extra flavor for some of the factions that didn't make it into the game. So there is Illyria guys, all of the brand new factions. I hope you enjoyed this video. We went through a lot. Let me know down in the comments below who you would like to play out of all of these Illyrian factions. Me, personally, I think I would like to play probably the, the Bernie or the Dardanians the most, uh, just because of their starting positions and their routes for expansion as well. I think that would be really cool indeed and if you did enjoy this video guys we're going to be doing a very deep dive on the history of all of these factions in an interview next week so make sure you get yourself subscribed and if you want to see the more in-depth uh, developer diaries you can go into the description below and see the link to the mod discord make sure you like and subscribe guys RAS Weekends is finally back. It's so good. It's good for it to be here. Thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure. And I will see you all again on the next video.